needs power to a little time. I got this big bookshelf, which I am not fond of in the way that it looks, so I'm going to actually chop it in two and make it into two bookshelves or rolling carts, depending on what I'm in the mood for. So I'm about to use my circular saw. So the important thing when using any power tools, remember they're loud. You want your earphones, stuff flies, you want your eye wear, plus it looks kind of cool. And sawdust is terrible for your lungs, so you want to make sure you have a dust guard on. All right, so I'm going to get all this on, and I'm going to show how to start cutting with this. Doctor, the patient's ready for surgery. When cutting with a circular saw, it's helpful to use a leveler both as a measurement tool to make sure your line is correct and as a straight edge. I used a carpenter's pencil and a piece of painter's tape to make the line make sure that my cut is even and straight. What you want to make sure to do is when using a circular saw, first of all, don't put your hand out in front of it. You should never do that with any kind of a saw. You want to make sure that you have clearly marked where you want to cut. So I have used measuring tape and a leveler to make sure that it is straight and even on both sides. I also have a saw that has a laser guide which is going to continue to help me to make sure I make this cut straight. You want to make sure before you put your blade up against your piece of furniture that the blade is already going. If you try to put it up against it, and start the blade then, it's going to jam and not cut very well. Okay, so let's try this out. So you can notice how it didn't finish on the other side. I'm going to come around the other side and finish that. We'll repeat this on the other side. We'll have two pieces. So we now have two bookshelves that I can make into bookshelves or small rolling cart or storage. Now one's a little shorter than the other because of where I cut, but they're going to be fantastic. So just wait and see what we do next. I have an old board that's going to make the bottom of my rolling cart. I cut it to size on my table saw. This is going to provide strength to the bookshelf and a place to screw in the casters. If you don't have a table saw, Go ahead and use your circular saw the same as you did to cut the bookshelf in half. So now I've got this cut down. I had this extra board and um, this actually used to be part of a bench in my kitchen. Flies are attacking me in my garage. Glamorous job that I have. So I have measured how wide this was. Now don't be surprised when you come across MDF furniture if the inside is actually cardboard. Pretty much no stronger than a Christmas box. But we're going to make sure we're going to reinforce that by adding some wood to the top and the bottom. So this is going to make my bottom piece. I've measured it and cut it down to fit. I'm going to screw it into place and I'm going to add my casters. We'll flip it over and decide what we're doing next. Now I added my casters. Since the inside of the bookshelf was really made of cardboard, I had to be careful and make sure that the casters were going where it met up with the wood. It's helpful to use drill to make pilot holes. This way you can screw down more easily. It's also helpful if you can put them all in place before you actually screw them in. This will make the cart more functional as it can roll around now. So I've decided I don't particularly like the idea of having both sides open and this I decide is going to be the back and it doesn't look as pretty. So I'm going to just put some thin, basically Luan board over it. Now here's a really good tip. This is the bottom of a drawer that I found. So if you come across drawers that have been departed from their dressers, just save them because you can use the drawer fronts for things, but you can also use the bottom for backings of things or chalkboards or it's it's good stuff. Just it's not trash. You can use that stuff up for other things. 
To further distress your wood, be sure to whack it hard. Just kidding. So turn it over and the top is less than desirable. You can see the bolts and the veneer is bubbling up and it's just generally gross. So I have these boards and I have no idea where I originally got them but they've been in my board pile and trust me, if you come across a construction area or a remodel or something and there's boards out front, ask the contractor and nine out of nine, ten times they were so happy to give it to you because it's just that much less they have to haul to the dump. So I'm going to put three of them across the top and make a really cool reclaimed wood top. I've done my best to clean it up using TSP cleaner. You can use anything that will get up some of that grease. Now you're going to need wood glue. I use Gorilla Wood Glue and just apply in an S motion as you can see in this picture. Even though you're going to screw the wood down, this just provides an extra layer of bonding and will make your cart that much more secure. So here you have it. I have taken a kind of an ugly, worn out, found in the dumpster bookshelf and I've made it into a rolling cart. Stay tuned for how I'm going to finish this. Hi! If you like this project, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more junk makeovers. Check out my blog, redointeriors.com, to see how I finished it with CC Caldwell's Thomasville Teal and their all-new natural Kukui stain. It's fabulous.